folks, we have, uh, I don't want to call it a treat because that's not what we say, but we have somebody here special. We have a special progressive, a progressive of progressives. This is Maurice Mitchell, who is the national director of the Working Parties family. Maurice, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Let me, let me first tell you, I saw you at a, a conference here at, at Netroots Nation, and everybody who left that room was impressed, not solely because of your presence, but because of your message. Mm -hmm. What I want you to uh, tell our audience here is what does the Working Families Party represent first, and what you taking directorship of that means going forward. Absolutely. So I could describe what we do in many ways, but in the same way that the traditional political establishment is very accountable to millionaires, billionaires, and corporations, the Working Families uh, Party is accountable to everyday working people. Right. Right. And we seek to sort of pioneer this idea of non-delusional right. third-party politics. Right. So, explain that. So, what is a party? Right? What ultimately is a party? A party is maybe four things. People who freely assemble to engage in electoral work, to advance a platform that is distinct, that is governed by a coherent ideology. Ideology is just the, world, just the vision of the world that you want it to be. Right. Right? When you're doing that, you're essentially showing up functionally as a party. So we are a party because we assert we're a party and because we do electoral work in that fashion and we elect grassroots candidates, many times primarying Democrats, right, who otherwise would never be able to run and win. People who have been on the margins of power, everyday working people, LGBT people, uh, people of color, people with a radical political agenda that doesn't fit into the norms. We, we elect those people again and again and again on the local level and on, on the legislative level all around the country. We endorse folks, we've endorsed more than a thousand people last cycle and we recruit and run people and so for example Morgantown West Virginia City Council we last cycle we won every single race in that in that uh, campaign in that in that election mm -hmm. that's Morgan Morgantown West Virginia that isn't Berkeley that isn't that isn't Williamsburg that isn't like a progressive center um, the school board of Milwaukee Wisconsin wow. we won that one of our one of our uh, national committee members Mandela Barnes is the lieutenant governor of Milwaukee. He's a 32-year-old black man named Mandela that has progressive values, winning in the Midwest, winning in the quote-unquote blue wall, right? So the political orthodoxy tells us that in order to win uh, with working class people in the Midwest, we need to be small with our politics. We need, to de we need to deny our progressive values and we need to just kind of engage in this sort of third way. Right small bore sort of uh, issue agenda. Well, what we've seen, and we've proven it time and time again, that everyday working people want an agenda that where a vision actually meets the demands that they're facing. And, and people are facing a, a, a crisis that is, that is at an existential scale. Right. And so you can't witness this crisis at an existential scale and then give people band-aids. Right, and give people small solutions. That's not going to inspire people to vote or to organize. I want, I want to make a comment to something. You said uh, for radical ideas. Yeah. It, is it really radical if that's what most people really want? Well, in the most fundamental definition of the word radical, which means at the root, uh -huh. most people want root fixes. Right. When you want something fixed, do you want it fixed? Halfway, in, in halfway no. or do you want it fixed in a fundamental way? You want it fixed. Of course. And, and, and so, the people that don't want root fixes is a very small niche group of very privileged people. Because when things are fixed at the root, when things are, are fixed structurally, it probably means that somebody somewhere is either sharing or giving up some form of power, right? And, and that somebody somewhere usually has access to a lot of power and they want to constrain our ability to share in the bounty that is America. And so radical isn't extreme, right? right? The thing that is extreme is extreme centrism, extreme corporatism. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Simply responding to the urgent callings of everyday people is the most sensible thing you could possibly do. 
Choosing to find a problem and decide we're going to fix it for good is the most sensible thing you could possibly do, right? So the radicals, the true, the, the true extremists, the true extremists are the people who are, who are ex extremely centrist and, and ignore, in order to ignore the beating heart of the grassroots, millions and millions of people, you have to be extremely tone deaf. Right. Right. So they use the language of, of um, extremism with us. Right. But what we're talking about is common sense every day is where most people are at. Um, but, but it isn't where the establishment, it isn't where elite opinion makers on right. television are at. And so if you're reading the papers, if you're watching 24 hour news, um, if you're in elite opinion conversations, then that conversation is on another planet than the, the kitchen table conversations that people are having every day. You used an example today that I want you to use to our audience right yeah. now. It's very important. You're, you're walking home, you go into your mother and father's home, That's right. and you watch them watching TV. Mm -hmm. You watch them watching a bunch of elitists mm -hmm. telling them what is wrong with them who yeah. have never ever lived their experience. That's right. I mean, it's one of the things that I, I remarked on. So. My, peop my, my, my mom and dad are, are working class immigrants. Um, they're, they're both naturalized citizens. They love voting. They love watching I was the curious, news. Where, 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 what country did I say? Um, from Trinidad and Grenada in Got the it. Caribbean, okay. right? And, um, and so they're watching, they're like news junkies. They're watching the news and they're witnessing uh, elite opinion makers talk to other elite opinion makers around what do working class people think? What, what are communities of color like? What are, what are the beating heart issues in communities of color? Like, how do, how, do we, how do we advance the working class vote? Elite folks talking to elite folks about us, right? And to me, I find that to be really problematic, right? And so we need to break that echo chamber, the elite echo chamber, right. and we need to have conversations that reflect our lived experience back at, at, at us. You know, it's like we are experts. Mm -hmm at our own experience. Right. And we don't need elites telling us how we should feel about our politics. We know because we experience it every day. And so one of the things, one of the tricks is folks convincing us what's electable, right? I think that a lot of the support that, that Joe Biden is getting is based on everyday people, not necessarily preferring him, but be believing the elite chatter that a small bore policy white guy with a, with a steady steady hand on the on the ship is what America needs and what America would tolerate. I, and don't you also think it's, they think that well the, the trade off they're willing to make now is that's the only guy that they think or have been made to believe can beat Trump. Yeah, I mean because they're hearing it over and over and over again. But they personally, right. if you ask them, okay, cool, but. But who do you who do you actually story. value? Who would you actually want to win? Right. And it's like, oh well, I mean, if I could have it my way, Elizabeth Warren or Bernie or but Biden's the guy that's going to do exactly. it. That's an amazing disconnect. And I've talked to so many people. It's rarely that I meet like a true, true supporter, Bur I'm uh, not a true, supporter of a true Biden, Biden person, right. right? They're like, yeah, a Biden's this Biden to me is the person I think most American. But what, if most Americans are saying my actual my actual choice is another person, what would it mean if we break, uh, broke down and challenged the, the orthodoxy around electability and say, well, electability is actually based on who everyday people actually believe in, right? right? And if we could harness that energy, because when you campaign for somebody you actually believe in, you're not just voting for them. You're telling everybody. You're right. telling your, your mama, your cousin, everybody about them. You're knocking on doors for them. You're giving your small dollar donations right. to them. That's how we win. We build a movement. Now, Maurice, let me ask you this now. With, with regards to the Working Families Party and the Democratic Party, yeah. how are you symbiotically existing and uh, meaning you are sort of consider the progressive wing of the party in some extent? Sure. So let me explain this, right? We recognize that we live in a very entrenched two-party system. Right. Right. And for decades and decades, there's state by state, there are all these election laws that prevent all types of interesting political opinions and third parties from emerging. Right. So we recognize that that's a, a fundamental challenge, right? What we like to do is cook what we have in the kitchen. Right. Right. So one of the things that we do is 
we engage in democratic primaries as a site of struggle. Right. And we target corporate Democrats and other people who aren't accountable, and we surface our own working families folks to run against them on a, on a progressive agenda, right? So that's number one. Number two, over time, we absolutely want to transform the party Democratic. politics. Oh, oh, we want to transform oh, party politics right. so, so more upstarts and third parties could actually exist in a way where the spoiler dilemma doesn't exist. Right. So fusion vo voting, rank choice voting, rank and choice. other things. Yeah. That's a, that's a structural change that we, de uh, that we, that we believe in. Right. But in the meantime, we think that there's an interesting fight within the Democratic Party. There's two sets of people. There's people who think the Democratic Party could be reformed. Right. And there's people who think that it's naive to imagine that a party that's so corporately captured yeah. could ever really what be. What is your thought? Um, so I have an opinion on that. And I want your opinion on that. So I believe that the Dem I, both, I believe both things. Right. I believe that, the, of course, like any institution, mm -hmm. the Democratic Party can be reformed. Right. Any institution can be reformed. Right. And I'm not so cynical. I'm a, I believe in transformative change. I'm not right. so cynical that right. I don't believe institutions can be reformed. However, right. just like a tree branch, right? Like if you, if you, you could, you could, um, you could manipulate the branch of a tree in many right. different directions, makes, yeah. but there's a point of yeah. rupture. If you pull hurt. that branch too far, it it'll breaks. break. Yeah. That's the same for any institution. Right. That's the same for the Democratic Party. So there's a point of transformation that might cause a rupture in the Democratic Party. You have to understand the Democratic Party has within this big tent folks in Wall Street and people who identify as Democratic, a Democratic Socialist, Socialist right? right? It's a really, really big tent. Right. And so if the left faction in the Democratic Party builds steam right. and organizes and continues to reform the Democratic Party, there may be a point of rupture, which right. is why institutions like the Working Families Party is so essential. And it's ready. And it's ready. Right. So if that point of rupture does happen, those forces have a safe landing. No. Now, if that point of rupture doesn't happen, right. or if that point of rupture takes years, you need independent electoral vehicles constantly moving our entire politics, not right. just the Democratic right. Party, right. further to the grassroots. Right. And, and so it's essential to me the corporations of Wall Street are always going to fund the Democratic Party, right. right? Everyday, like, working people, the people that are listening, you need to invest in vehicles like the Working Families Party and other vehicles. No, um, I'm talking about investment yep. in your vehicles. Yep. Are you, what states are you in currently? We're in 14 states, 14. and we're growing, right? So are you in Texas, by the way? Yeah, we're in Texas. Okay. Um, so we have a staff operation of 14 states and growing, and we have activists in every single state. Mm -hmm. Right, and one of the things I've doing, I, I've just, I've become di a director of the national, I've become a national director of the so party. So you run the party. I run the party. Uh, I'm the national director. I started in August of last year. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm doing to transform the party is I'm building tools, and we'll be offering these tools soon to people wherever you are, even if you're not in a state where we have a staff operations, right. where you could pull down the tools of the party and begin to party build on the hyper-local level, in the neighborhood level, on the municipal level. Let me ask you a technical question yeah. here, because uh, right now we've been building a whole lot of precinct chairs and so forth under the Democratic Party. Yeah. And there are some rules uh, as far as being affiliated with any other party. What's the, what, are, you, sure. are you guys considered a party, or so, how does it work? Um, so there's a short answer to that, mm -hmm. which is there's fusion voting, mm -hmm. um, and in four of the states where there's fusion voting, New York, Connecticut, Oregon, and South Carolina, we are a political party in every single way. Right. Fusion voting means that you, as, a, as a, right. an elected, elected official or somebody running for office, you can be endorsed by a number of parties, right. which means you have to do the spoiler thing. Because right. you could be a working families person and also be endorsed by the Democrats. Right. Right? So in places where there isn't fusion, um, we don't have party status in that way. Right. But regardless, we work. The, re the reality is that we work with people where there's a common interest. Mm -hmm. And we often have a common interest with, with Democrat, Democratic parties and states right. all over the country, right? Or, or folks who identify as Democrats in states all over the country. Right. Sometimes our interests don't rub together, right? right? And we have those battles, you know? Yeah, so so we, we primaried the incumbent Democratic governor of New York, okay. Andrew Cuomo. Right, good, um, good job. And, we, and in that primary fight, although our, although our, our candidate didn't win, Andrew Cuomo had to spend $30 million of and his campaign cash, and he moved his position. Yes. 
radically. He did 180s on marijuana. Right. He did 180s on a number. We call it the Cynthia effect because right. we we um, we Cynthia endorsed. Cynthia Nixon Cynthia. forced him to move. Absolutely. Yeah. So that I shows. I interviewed her back in that last year. Great. Yeah. So that shows how our politics are affected. Right. right? We, we are willing to have those fights. Right. You know, we're not going to unilaterally disarm right. against um, the corporate faction of the, of the Democratic Party for false unity. Right. We think those fights need to happen and we need to fight the, the far right. right. Both and, right? And so we, we take on those fights. And, but in other places, especially when the Democrats are out of power, the, listen, it's a united front. <laughs> Yeah, it's a united front, and right. we're more than happy to form an electoral united front with any faction that's interested in fighting the ultra right wing. What we want to do, so so people talk about how Texas is going to eventually become blue, right? Right, and um, how Georgia may become blue. Right. We're not satisfied with that. Right. We're not satisfied. You want a progressive, a progressive blue in Georgia and a progressive blue in Texas. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not satisfied simply by shifting from Republicans to so, Democrats in which, state houses. Which, again, the establishment is the establishment is yeah. the establishment party notwithstanding. Yep. Um, Maurice, give my audience, I mean, that was a great uh, great intro that, I, that we had to you here at Netroots in the, the Daily Coast um, room. Give our audience a reason. Give the audience a reason for following what you guys are doing, for supporting what you guys are doing, and for contributing to the people you support. Absolutely. So, listen. I tell, first of all, for the newcomers, who you are, again. Yes. So my name is Maurice Mitchell. I'm the National Director of the Working Families Party. So, um, there's some people that say the definition of insanity is doing the same things and expecting a different outcome, right. right? So for generations, we've done the same things and it's led to a Trump presidency, to the ultra far right taking control of the federal government, right? And us being at the losing position in many, many ways as right. a movement. And so I encourage everybody to do things very, very different in their politics. One of the things that they could do is support the Working Families Party, become a member, and support our candidates, right? We reflect politics as we desire it actually to be, right? So if you want to engage in politics in a way where you, you feel grounded in your values and you actually win, we're winning elections, mm -hmm. and you do it on, on your terms, this is the place to do politics in a way that aligns with our values. And that I would encourage everybody to do that. And if you believe that aligning with our values is the way that we take back the heart and soul of this country, then come to Working Families Party. We're growing, we're building, we have aspirations to be in every single state, and we could only do it in partnership with everyday people like the folks who are watching right now. Maurice Mitchell, National Director of the Working Parties. The Working Families, families Party. Party. That's right. Thank you so kindly for being with me. Thank you. Friend. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.